Hi, my name is Franco Sancho. Uh, once again, we are going to continue with the different practices related to qualitative um, uh, research analysis uh, with Atlas TI. In this case, we are going to see practice four uh, that is uh, based uh, that where we are going to do a textual analysis in Atlas TI. We are going to explain different concepts. So let's go to see the slide the slides first, and afterwards we are going to uh, practice a little bit. Well, textual uh, level, uh, the textual level in this course analysis. Well, remember, it's important that you remember that uh, the work we do in Atlas TI is cumulative. So for the first thing you need to do is to open the hermeneutic units that you prepared in practice three in the introductory uh, video. And uh, please, uh, save it with a different name. For example, the, the same name by changing practice three by practice four. In this way, uh, you are going to uh, keep the old uh, file and have a new one and, and not uh, losing any information from one practice to another. So uh, in this uh, textual analysis, what we are going to do is use two tools that are very used in Atlas TI that are quotes or citations and memos. Uh, this kind of application, these applications are basically uh, exploratory and we are going to use it uh, a lot. We are going to use it at discretion. Uh, not, that is, not be, do, do not be very selective. Uh, the selection of these uh, quotes and the classification or categorization is going to be done in the next practice when we see the different codes. So an, 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 an analogy that I like a lot uh, to explain the different levels of, of uh, discourse analysis is the idea of an astronomer that uh, is looking at the, at the sky, at the stars, at the different stars in the sky. So in the first case, he or she look at the, at the skies without the telescope, trying to explore the sky and locate the different things he or she wants to see. This idea is what we are going to do in the first um, uh, step in this textual analysis. We are going to use quotes and memos in this case to identify the different elements that could be useful, could be useful in next steps. In the next step, it is going to be practice number five. Uh, we are going to use that telescope. We are going to specify the things. We are going to read again the different quotes that we have underlined and we are going to codify to categorize them depending on the study on the uh, on the study we are doing uh, and finally uh, in the last in the last level in the contextual level what we are going to do is to try to join these these stars or these codes or these families of codes to create constellations in this case would be the networks so uh, coming back again to this slide that we saw in practice number three, in the first level, we are going to have the primary documents that we are going to see later. And now we are going to focus on the textual level. That means we are going to um, uh, study how the statement is characterized. We are going to read for the first time after the transcription uh, the ideas that the interviewee or, or the individual is, is giving and try to underline to the, the, quotes, the quotes or the citations. Uh, in the next week, well, we are going to go. We are going to jump from textual to conceptual or contextual, and in this case, we are going to try to understand what did you mean by using this sentence, these words. So, in this case, in the second level, we are going to use codes instead of quotes. And in the last section, in the last level, an organizational level or inter interpretive level. What we are going to try to do is to find some relationship between the different concepts, between the different codes uh, that we have used or family of codes. So we are going, first of all, we are going to have a look uh, to, the, to the whole research process in, in this course analysis. And in the first part, we see the first stage is just the delimitation of the objective of the study. That is writing down the specific research question, the open one, the, the overall research question. Afterwards, the objective, the specific objectives that you have already done in the previous uh, 
practices and the contextual delimitation of the study, both temporal and spatial. Where are you going to gather the information and in which location you are going to do it. In the second stage is where you are now, gathering information. Remember that in our case, our study uh, required doing some focus groups and doing some in-depth interviews. So uh, the fieldwork stage includes the technical design. This is the kind of, the, the kind of methodology, the planning of all the techniques, the, the planning stage, and also gathering the information. In the third stage is what we are doing also now. We are going to see, we are going to do this technique, uh, analysis, technique analysis by using Atlas DI. And we are going to uh, divide this into three levels, as we have seen before. The experiential perspective, this is our, is going to be our textual analysis. Analytical perspective is going to be our contextual or conceptual analysis and interpret perspective, interpretive uh, perspective that is going to be the um, organizational uh, level. So in the first case, what we are going to do is to code a discretion, to use the different quotes as soon as possible, uh, sorry, as much as possible. That means every sentence or every idea that you think could be uh, related to any of the, your objectives is going to be underlined. We are going to use also memos, that we are going to see now, uh, if we want to uh, write some notes, different types of notes. Next, in the next class, not in this class, but in the next class, what we are going to do is a selective coding. In this case, we are going to use codes. We are going to go through all the different quotes or citations that we are going to do this. And we are going to put a name. We are going to uh, assign or categorize each of the ideas into different concepts. We are going to see this next week. And finally, in the interpretive uh, perspective, we are going to try to find relationships or links between the different codes and points. At the end of the, the once we have done all the, the, the analysis with Atlas DI, we are going to write our report. It's important to, to, to have in mind that this kind of discourse analysis is a qualitative uh, analysis and it's inductive. Uh, we, the idea, we, uh, it's important to take into account the idea of saturation of information we don't need an statistically representative uh, sample, but we need at, at least a typologically representative, uh, a typological uh, representative sample. That means if we have a small group of people that is, but that is typologically representative, maybe we don't need to gather more information in terms of qualitative uh, in-depth interviews or focus group, because the more uh, the uh, added information, maybe that, uh, I, sorry, by adding more people, maybe we don't add a lot of information. And one important idea or concept that I want to, um, to underline is that my, uh, qualitative marketing research is complex and sometimes it's not uh, as straightforward as quantitative marketing research. So in this case, when we are doing the different steps, we need to have marketing imagination or marketing creativity. We need to open our mind and we, we, we need to think out of the box sometimes in order to categorize, link, and so on. Quantitative uh, research, market research, uh, usually is more straightforward. There are different techniques that we have to apply and the steps are more um, uh, known. So let's go into see an example. This example is the same that we have seen in previous classes. As you see, there is some context. In this case, a rural hotel La Fuente framed in the rural tourist accommodation sector needs to know what is, uh, its audience is like to generate actions and proposals to, that connect with, uh, with them and in a transversal way. So in this uh, uh, imaginary example, we have three different specific objectives. The first one is to draw a possible co a customer journey map as well as, as, well as its uh, touch points we have done this in previous classes, in previous videos. Second one, identify the cost of consumer typologies or build a, a buyer persona. We saw this in the part in the video related to the practical session uh, it, uh, or the practical talk uh, given by Carlos Mora. 
and in the last one, for example, understanding the motivators of our clients to choose our accommodation. There are three different uh, levels. Let's go into think about uh, the, the different motivators of the different reasons why people choose our accommodation instead of choosing another accommodation. And here I'm going to introduce you uh, one different levels of relationship between the customer and the, uh, and the company. This, these are these different levels. Uh, well, I come from the book of Juan Carlos, Juan Carlos Alcaide, Customer Experience. Um, and we are going to see how we can apply it to our case. Remember that in our case, we are talking about, or you are talking about different services. And in your services, you are, you are doing a study regarding customer experience. And customer, and by do, to analyze customer experience, we use the tool called Customer Journey Map, and we analyze the customer profile. Okay, if we think in customer experience, uh, this customer experience, there are different um, actions, there are different things that happen be in the relationship between the client and the company that could be categorized into three different levels. For example, the traditional a idea of marketing is that the individual try to choose the alternative, the, the company, the service that uh, maximize their, their utility in terms of money. So the idea is, okay, I pay a money or I receive a service with different characteristics, specific characteristics of this service, tan tangible characteristics, and uh, I pay money and I also spend time in this alternative uh, as a payoff. So I receive a service and I pay something back. This idea is the transactional uh, approach or the transactional level. We are going to see that some of the ideas that the individuals give in the, in the interview or in the focus group are basically belong to the transactional level. If we uh, go one step ahead, there is a second level that is called relational level. It's when companies establish some kind of relationship with, with the individual. This relational level is very good because it allows the company to know better the client and also, uh, and also uh, provide a more specific and more detailed uh, service. Also, this kind of relationship increases the loyalty of the individuals uh, regarding this company compared, for example, to its competitors. So there are different ideas that an individual can express in an in-depth interview that are related to relational factors. And finally, the experiential level. This is something quite novel or quite new uh, where, they, where, where companies try to uh, include different features of the, uh, to the, in, the, in the service or in the product to transform this product or service uh, from a product, a uh, basic product of service to an experience. And this idea of experience, uh, uh, of, of experiential level, uh, arises a lot of feelings in the individuals. So this is the idea. The basic, uh, the basic element is the transactional. The second one is the relational. And the best one is including all three, including the experience. So this is the idea. Uh, OK, this is, the, this is the conceptual framework we are going to use. We are going to analyze our, uh, uh, the script of the, the answers of the individuals in the, in the interview, for example, based on these three levels. So remember that your textual analysis is linked to the script. This is an example of a script. That, and that the script must be, but must be good, but it must be complete, but be well structured because we are going to, we need that script to be able to gather all the information we need. Of course, there is some kind of information called serendipity that is unexpected information that individuals can give, but it's not very common that this happens. So this, for example, could be our questions. And uh, let's going to talk about the things we are going to look for. Quotes, uh, but have in mind these three different levels transactional, relational, or experiential level. So the idea of the quotes is the following. What we are going to do with the first 
uh, in-depth interview, the transcription of the first in-depth interview, we are going to underline all the ideas that we think that are related <clears throat> either to uh, transactional level, either to a relational level or to the experiential level. So uh, we are going to underline all of them and in the next practice, we are going to put names to each of them, specific names. How to do that? We can use a drop down menu, the click and uh, on, in, on, in quotations, <clears throat> new quotation, we select in the text and we can create the new, the new quote. Let's go to see it in an example. Later, we are going to see it with the computer. So here we have the transcription. This is the display of the Atlas TI version seven. And to create the first quote, we just <coughs> select with the mouse. Where well, we think we click the right button and we uh, click create quote, create free quote. We click on that and there is one section here, as you see, one indication that as a quote or a theta is created. Great. So we we would we are going to go through all the uh, uh, transcription, looking for these kind of ideas that could be related to customer experience at different levels. So, but another uh, interesting uh, element or tool that uh, Atlas TI is the memos. The memos or memoings are uh, useful. I, I, use, I usually use it like, a, or consider them as posits. When you use a posit to remind you something. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to use posits to uh, include information throughout the analysis that could be useful in the future. So uh, we are going to use this, these four different categories. There could be more, of course. These are, I think, the most useful in our case. We are going to have observation notes. This is, for example, things that we see if we have a video, we have the transcription and we have the video. And maybe we have we are looking at the different different things that happen in this in this video. For instance, imagine that uh, when a person finish uh, giving me uh, an answer, he or she smiles or laughs or is sad or is upset. So I can say when the person was saying, I can select the text and I can say when the person was saying this, she or he was upset was smiling, whatever. Observational notes. So we would put O-N, space, and whatever. Met methodological notes. Uh, imagine that we do the first, for example, how can we use it? We, have a, we make the first uh, in-depth interview, and we realize that there were points in the interview that we should do, should change things for future interviews, should uh, make a follow-up question, why, to, to, to find more detail. So all these things that can be useful for the future in terms of methodology would include MN, methodological notes. Notes on how to collect data, how to talk, what to bring, when to call on the phones, and so on. Theoretical notes, for example, can be ideas that we can have regarding the theoretical constructs. In our case, in this example, we have three theoretical constructs. We have the transactional level, the organizational, the, the uh, relational level, and the experiential level. So we could include theoretical notes to um, give an idea that this quote, for example, could be uh, or could belong to this category. So in the next. Uh, and if, for example, if we have an idea that we is not very clear for us, we can say, I'm not very sure that this is uh, relational or experiential, for example. And we can solve these questions throughout uh, later on the study. And personal notes. If we have feelings about the study, things that we need to do, personal notes. So these are the things. How to create the memo. As I told you, we uh, click on memo. Uh, we can select, for example, we can go to memo and we can put the thing we want. O-N, observation note, M-N, T-N, P-N. And afterward, whatever you want. This is 
NM. Well, in Spanish is NM, in English is Methodological Notes, MN. So, Methodological Note, contactar, get in touch with Alberto Gauss. We, we, by doing this, uh, first we put the, the, the name of the, of the memo, and afterwards I can give more detail on the memo. The title, the detail, and also we can check if it's, the memo has been properly created or not. And you see that the memo is similar to the quote, but the quote has no letters here, and in the memo I have the title, so I can use it for the future. An example, for example, of the translation of the transcription that I showed you before, of this transcription, hotel uh, direct, uh, manager of hotel, rural hotel La Fuente, is, this is an example, it's a summary, for example, of uh, a textual analysis. As you see, this is the summary of the textual analysis, uh, taking into account that there are three different levels and we have read all the things, maybe this is an example, there should be more na na names here, this, these numbers are quite small, but imagine, as an example, we can have a total of uh, three, six, 12 quotes divided into relational three, transactional and experiential, and memos, uh, for example, one, two, and zero. As I told you, in the example you have to do, there should be more quotes and more memos. But this summary is very important. And now, we're going to jump to the things we have to do, we need to do in the class. Textual analysis. This is the assignment for this week, as I told you. This week, we need to do the following. First of all, to keep on uploading primary documents. Remember, you had one in-depth interview that we did in previous, uh, in previous classes, but you need to do more. If you have done more, uh, upload the, uh, the additional transcriptions to the program. If you haven't, we, you, you can do the practice by only without problem, by, you, by only using one in the interview. The second thing I want you to do is to write the specific objective of your study. Think of your specific objective and write it down. Um, before creating number three, before creating quotes and memos, uh, you need to do a meeting with at least two of your students, two, uh, two of, the, of the individual of the group, to agree that the work is homogeneous, to think about what we are going to consider as a transactional level, and to work a little bit together, what we're going to do with relational what we are going to do about experiential. Remember that in this case, we are going to work, for example, with one in-depth interview, but in the future, we are going to have more. You're going to have five in-depth interviews and you're going to have at least one focus group. And this is going to be a lot. This is why maybe you need more than one coder. Uh, this is a good point to create a code book of quotes, of the idea, what we are going to include in the, in the next class, we are going to talk about specific quotes, but now you can have this, this begin having an idea of the different quotes and how you are going to classify them. And of course, the memos, if you are going to have methodological, observational, and so on. And uh, once you have done that, this create your memos related to customer experience of the service. And in this case, related to the three different levels, transactional, relational and experiential. And what I want you to do is to do this in the hermeneutic unit I create in Word, a summarize, a table to summarize your quotes and your, and your uh, memos. Finally, uh, you need to save this with the hermeneutic unit, the name, the name of your group and practice form. So we have seen this practice on Monday, it's the 7th of May, of March, sorry, and you need what you, 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 you are going to have one week to do this until Monday 14th of March. So send it to me by mail. Please include section two, three and four in a Word document and send me the hermeneutic unit of practice number four. I hope, I hope you have enjoyed this, this, this section uh, the, where we, are, we talk about textual uh, analysis in, in Atlas TI. Uh, we are going to do more videos in order to keep on with the with the study.